on Venus. Do the booty dance on Venus. Get on the ship. And do the booty dance on Venus. Hey. Party hard, big party on Venus. It's a party. Booty dance on Venus. Get on. Hey Edgar, who turned off the music? What's going on in here, guys? Come on. Edgar said Venus is the new Vegas, Sin Planet. So they are planning on going to Venus. Venus? Venus, baby, Venus. On it, typewriter, not you two. Look. You guys wouldn't last a second on Venus. Venus, Venus, Venus. Well, first, the atmosphere is so intense that it would crush you if you ever got on Venus. And on top of that, it's like 900 degrees Fahrenheit. It's like hot enough to melt lead. Way to crush our dreams, Dr. J. Where did this come from? Edgar, did you happen to read Podcane of Mars and get excited about the possibility of going to Venus? Guys, guys, that book was published in 1963. Like, they didn't know much about Venus when Robert Heinlein wrote that, so I'm assuming he predicted this future and didn't know that just being on Venus is pretty much impossible. Venus, Venus, Venus. Settle down, guys. Let, calm down. Hey, Raven, why don't you judge the book by its cover? Happy to oblige. Oh boy, look at this cover. She's a hottie. Uh, she's only 15. Ugh, why do they Why do they do that? Why do they draw young women like that? I don't know anything about the book, but let me guess, this is about a space cop. Nope, it's not about a space cop. She's an outlaw running away from space cops. No, she's not an outlaw running away from space cops. In fact, I, yeah, I don't get this cover here because this is 15 year old Pod Kane. Got this little car on the side here and I guess they're on Mars. It's not a very good book cover for this book. There are many other ones that are probably better. Here's one I think's really good. Yeah, oh, now I see she's a young girl. That I can't believe they did that to us. Let's just do the back of the book trailer, and then from there, I'll give you my thoughts on the book. Pod Kane Fries, born and raised on Mars, has just one ambition, to earn her wings as a starship pilot and rise through the ranks to command deep space explorations. The opportunity to travel aboard the Tricorn on an interstellar journey to Venus and Earth in the company of her diplomat uncle is a dream come true. Potty's idea of diplomacy is keeping the peace with her troublesome brother, Clark. But she's about to learn some things about war and peace, because her uncle is the ambassador extraordinary from Mars to the Three Planets Conference, which makes him and his niece and nephew potential targets for any radicals looking to sabotage the negotiations between the three worlds. All right, so Pod Kane of Mars is an interesting book. Now, I've never read anything by Robert Heinlein before, but I was really excited to pick this up. First of all, I was talking about Robert Heinlein with Regina St. Clair on the Writing Fiction podcast for weeks. We were talking about all his sort of tips for writers. I was excited to read this book, and I didn't hate the writing. The writing was good. The story was, eh. So it revolves around Pod Kane, or Potty for short, and not Potty, P-O-T-T-Y, P-O-D-D-Y, Potty. I don't know if my Philadelphia accent is like making it sound like Potty, but it sounds like Potty when I say Potty, but I mean Potty. Anyway, she's 16, 15 or 16 in Earth years, but she's from Mars. She grew up on Mars, and she has this psychopath brother who's like 11. Potty wants to go to Earth. Like, it's her dream to get to Earth and see it. She plans to go, but her plans get kind of thwarted by some weird thing with her parents and children that they have to take care of, these babies they have to take care of, so she can't go to Earth. But her uncle, who's a politician, is able to make it happen, and her uncle... Clark, her brother, and Potty get on a flight, well, a ship, and they travel to Earth. And then a lot of it at that point is walking around the ship. Most of it takes place on the ship. They're walking around this ship, and we're seeing how this works. Like, how can they travel? What about radiation? All this stuff is addressed. And it's, it's not boring. It's not like reading Life Force where it was just like, oh, here's a description of all this stuff and it was just people talking and boring. It was interesting. Most reviews I've seen when it comes to this book bring up one of its biggest flaws. And that is how Heinlein handles female 
characters and this female protagonist in general. And I found it weird because it feels like a young adult novel. I, I would put it in young adult just the way it's written and the fact that the character is 15, 16. But she begins with this dream of being the first woman star captain. So like Captain Kirk. But on the journey, she ends up taking care of the babies that are on the ship and changing diapers and finding a lot of joy in this, almost to the place where it's like, hey, I want to be a star captain, but maybe my place is in the home. So Podkane also doesn't think like women should allow men to know they're smart. She thinks you should manipulate men by being pretending to be stupid. It's a really strange view of how a woman should be. Again, this was written in the 60s, early 60s. I don't know anything else about Robert Heinlein at this point. So if I read more Heinlein, will I continue to see this poor characterization of a female protagonist or a female character? It also didn't go anywhere. I don't want to spoil the ending, but there is some espionage going on that you don't really see coming. And when it happens, it feels like, what? What's going on here? There are two endings. I won't spoil what the two endings are, but one was what Robert Heinlein wanted to happen. And the second one was his compromise with the publishers. The second ending that the publishers wanted, stupid. The first ending would be better. And you can get the original ending versions. They're out there. Because after Heinlein became Heinlein, people re-released these books with those endings. And let's talk about the brother, too. Clark is 11 years old, but he doesn't come across as 11. He comes across as much older, like in his early 20s. He feels like he's that, because he's brilliant, apparently. And everybody who's reviewed this book calls him a psychopath, and I agree. There's something wrong with Clark. Is anybody going to see this? Nobody sees it. And like I said, the uncle is part of some political thing. There's some people who don't like the uh, uncle that are rebels. I won't get into what happens, but that's kind of where we end up at the end. It seems like at the end, the moral of the story is that Podkane and Clark's parents were bad parents because they let them go on this trip with their uncle and all this bad stuff happens at the end of this book. Which makes no sense because, I mean, uncle, I think it's Tom, but the uncle, he's the one who brings them aboard. It's your responsibility, uncle. Don't go blaming it, all this stuff that happened. It's really the uncle's fault that all this stuff happened. He knew that his position put kind of a target on him. And to bring these kids into this, knowing that there's a possibility of danger because of who you are, that's irresponsible. You don't go blaming the parents who, by the way, were home taking care of babies. They couldn't go. It wasn't like they were bad parents out partying. So why is Raven and Edgar and everyone excited? Even you, haunted typewriter, why are they excited to go to Venus? Because in this book, Venus is this wonderful sin planet. It's like Vegas, but a whole planet where you can gamble. You can pretty much do whatever you want if it makes money. It's a capitalist planet. And all it's about is making money any way you can, and it's all good. How do you want to make money? Can you make money? That's what it basically is, this Sin City, but Sin Planet, I'm calling it. It sounds like this really exciting planet. Why the kids are brought there, um, they have to stop on Venus before they get to Earth. That's another thing that really gets me. They never get to Earth in this book. Like, I was waiting to see what Earth was going to be like in this future, and even, you know, if it's possible that Venus was somehow climatized and was able to be populated, which I don't think would be possible, it, it's disappointing that we never get to see Earth in this book. Like, her whole point is to get to Earth. And it doesn't happen. That bothered me. Now, when Podkane is on Venus, Clark's running around doing something. Because... He, he's about, when they first get on this trip, he brings up the fact that he has some kind of fairy dust or happy dust, I think is what they call it. It's like a drug or something. So the, the, as they're getting on the ship, they're like, do you have anything to claim? And he's like, happy dust. And uh, he does this to cause some kind of weird issue to sneak something on. It's kind of convoluted. I didn't like Clark and I don't like the uncle. Podkane, I did like the character, but again, I felt like we had a 
really strong character. She's smart, but I don't like that she had to pretend not to be smart to be liked by men. And again, I'm not just I'm not denying that women had to probably be that way in the 60s and 50s. But if you're reading this with the lens of modern society, it does leave you feeling like icky. I don't like that Pod Kane had these big dreams of being a female space captain in a male dominated world, but ends up being this sort of nanny to all these babies and realizing she loves doing that. I don't know, that was a little strange too. I think I gave this book three stars. The writing's good. The story, the plot, not good. It doesn't make me not want to read another Robert Heinlein book. I do enjoy his writing. I think that I picked up not his best work. I'll say that. I read this for Old School April, which has ended. So I will be doing a wrap-up for April of all the books I read during April, which I feel like wasn't as many as I wanted to hit, but I will get into those. If you like this kind of content, definitely subscribe, hit the bell. I'm looking for a thousand true fans. I have a Patreon now. Jump to my Patreon, the link is down below. You can just get on there for free, but there are different tiers you can join. So I really would love if you could support this show. Anything you could do, just even being a free subscriber on Patreon would be a big help. I will be putting other things on there and you, you'll see that in the future. But I'm trying to build the community of fun people who love to read and talk about books. And I got a lot of stuff coming up. And more fun with the demons. All right, Raven, you're not a demon. Andreas in the corner over here is a possessed doll. But you know what? I don't lock that possessed doll up like the Warrens did with Annabelle. That's cruel. Andreas is free to run around and dance as he was doing in the beginning of this video. Now, Haunted Typewriter is not a demon, just Haunted. And of course, Edgar, he's very quiet, reserved, but he likes to read books, so he kind of helps us along. Then we have Mutters over here. Mutters, I understand him, but I'll make sure to put subtitles so you can understand Mutters. So there you have it. My old school April science fiction novel, Pod Kane of Mars by Robert Heinlein, three stars. My suggestion would be find a different Robert Heinlein book if you're going to start reading Heinlein and probably read this only if you're like a completist and you have to hit every Heinlein novel. I'll be back soon with a new video. Peace! Yo! Do the booty that's on Venus. Do the booty that's on Venus. Get on the ship. And do the booty that's on Venus. Hey. Party hard, big party. On Venus, it's a party. Do the booty that's on Venus. Get on the ship. Do the booty that's on Venus. Hey. Party hard, big party. On Venus, it's a party. Do the booty that's on Venus. Get on the ship. Do the booty that's on Venus. Hey.